We're now for the Men's World Cup Finals. Before we concentrate on the first match, a chance to meet all of the five men who've made it through to this stage. And this is Fred Alsop from Sydney in Australia. This his first World Cup experience. Well, by contrast, the man who took fourth spot is Jacques Gay. This his fourth World Cup finals, originally from Quebec. These days, home is Calgary in Alberta. Qualifying third, the man who carries the hopes of the host nation on his shoulders, Koishi Takahashi from Sapporo on the North Island. Incidentally, no Japanese bowler has ever won the World Cup. And then uh, from Mexico in the second spot after the preliminary rounds, the powerful Mexican Mario Quintero. 11 times this man has struck a perfect 300. And very much the top bowler of the week. The man who must wait and see who he'll meet in the final. Cheng Ming Yang from Chinese Taipei, who comes into the World Cup final as the reigning World Masters champion. Well, those are the finalists, and these are the points they accumulated in getting to these finals. The totals you see on the right there being the number of pins they knocked down, plus the bonus points they earned. Arguably, though, more interesting are their averages over the past four days. There they are. However, none of those count anymore. It's down to one 10-frame game for each step on the ladder. So time for us now to get on to that first match. Here's Fred Alsop, left-handed, which means the pocket for him is the gap between the one and two pins. These his thoughts on the task ahead. All matches are going to be pretty tough, and coming from fifth spot, well, you, you can't get any tougher than coming from the bottom in, in some ways. But in other ways, it could be easier because you're, you're on the lanes and you're fresh. If you just have a bit of luck along the way, and who knows, you might be playing the championship match at the end of the day. And from there, it's only one game, and anybody can win one game. Well, trying to beat him will be Jacques Gay, the first man to roll a perfect 300 in the World Cup, right-handed, Twice he's finished fourth in this competition. It's one thing I haven't won, and I've, I have a, quite a, a few records, you know, but uh, this one here is hard to come. You may never come back out of Canada, so it's very important for me to win, but, uh, you know, there's only going to be one winner, and hopefully I'll be the one. Well, here on the left in the VIP section, Mr. Akagi, the chairman of the organization. And next to him, to his left, Ben Peterson, executive vice president of AMF Bowling. And I wonder who they've got their money on here, Bernard. Well, hard to say. I'd say Mr. Akagi is waiting for uh, the host country Japan bowler to uh, have his money on that. But this man, Fred Alsop, now left-hander, as you see which many people would probably say has a better advantage because of the fact that the lane is used on the left side. But that's not an advantage for Fred. Leave his one, three, seven, and nine pins. Here you see it again. Remember, only two practice balls each of the players have had on these lanes before their first shot in the game. Well, that's a nasty combination to be faced with in your first frame. It certainly is. But I suppose uh, you can say if you're going to run into trouble uh, in a one 10 frame game, you better do it early so you've got time to recover. <laughs> but if he spares this out, he'll have done really well. No, I think he just decided safe than sorry, get the three. Take the maximum number, yeah. Take the maximum number. Left the seven pin over on the left hand side. So an open frame, an opportunity right at the beginning here for Jacques Gay. He's the uh, older of the two by three years. He's 43. But, uh, neither of these men, the oldest two, have ever succeeded in the World Cup. More of that after this first ball. Oh, 
Trump, would you believe it? And he's got a split. Four, six, seven, he's left. Now, I'll tell you, I mean, uh, Jack has a lot more experience in the World Cup than does uh, Fred because he's been in the World Cup before and he's been in the step out of finals before, but, uh, and I'm sure he's, he's left this split before, but this is a real difficult. He'll just settle for taking the... Well, I was going to say the two, but that's a mistake. I mean, he's laughed to himself there, but, you know, even a single pin can count. It can indeed, Jack, but, I mean, it, it really was because it was a 4-6-7. Don't forget, it's very difficult to slide it across there, and it's not worth the chance. The single pin could count at the end of the game, so they're, they're both more or less level. In fact, there's one pin ahead. Fred is nine. Jack has eight after the first frame. So here he goes. Second frame, chance to make amends. There you see, totally different. That left-hand lane, the ball actually turned much more left than it, than it did on the right-hand lane, and you can see Jack looking down at the approach, wondering what exactly. Remember again, they only got two practice balls. It's not an awful lot for you to get your line on, but he will very quickly get into operation. No problem. I mentioned earlier the oldest competitor. It was a chap called Remo. Fornasari from Italy, 51 he was when he won the World Cup in Kuala Lumpur in 1987. So, age no barrier in this game, Bernard. None, none whatsoever. One of the good things about 10-pin bowling is you can play it from the ages of four or five up until you're 90. So now, Fred, he really needs to uh, boost his confidence here with a good first ball. Looks a little better. Yes, seven pin. Try it to stay on the lane, but here you'll see that it gets a little kick across on the side. Watch it, here it goes, bing, bing, and over you go. That's it, down, nice strike. Frame two for Fred Olsen from Australia. Just remember, in the very first game of this Bowling World Cup, Fred Olsen opened up with a 258, his very first game on these lanes. Well, that was a few days ago. He'd love to have a 258 here today. Okay, he's got it. A nine count in the first, he's got a strike in the second, and he's up now for the third frame. Good looking release, looks good. Great mix. Real good ball, down the left hand side, turned in at the right pot, right into the one, two pocket, which it is for him. A great mix in the pins, and here you see it in slow motion. Watch your head nice and still, gets a good arm, gets it followed through. Perfectly up, has a look, and look at the result. Mix, and all down. And Australian bowling uh, generally going pretty well. He's the, the Australian Masters champion, as we now see Jacques trying to reply. And he strikes nicely. Now, is he beginning to find the line? Well, of course he is. He's such, here we can see it again. He's such a good player. He's been there a, lot, a long time at it. His first game in this tournament was 278 his very very first game on strange lanes after a long journey from Canada here so he is very experienced and don't rule this man Jack Gay out his fourth frame well that wasn't part of the script the four six now this is a real difficult because both pins one on the left side one on the right hand side and opposite each other I mean nearly impossible but it's not it can be done but I think Jack will probably take one going for it no just as you said take the single pin out now that's not good he's had a split in the first frame he's had a split in the fourth frame a strike and a spare in the middle and Fred Alsop, as you can see, has had an open frame, but he's had a strike in the second and third frame. Very much focused. So here's the man who earns his living as an insurance broker. There are not too many who can devote their entire life to 10-pin bowling. Just see the pleasure. Absolutely magnificent. Real tall man, so he's got great leverage with that left arm, and you can see the way he follows through. Watch it here again. He stands real erect, gets the ball right out on the lane, follows it right through, hand up, gets plenty of lift on it, ball turns in, there we go, one, two, pocket, and all down again. So that's uh, another good step forward there by the Australian Masters champion. Ball weight, uh, incidentally, 15 and a half pounds. And he's been bowling for 25 years, so 
In a sense, uh, he's virtually as experienced as Jacques Gay, but the difference is that Jacques has competed at the highest level more often than Fred. That time, that time you'll see, he just pulls it left, the ball actually crossed over the head pin and got over to the one three side. He didn't stay out long enough, probably just needed a little bit more movement than a little faster down the lane to touch more, and it would have been in the one two pattern. but needs to make no mistake now that the important thing really here is to make sure that he gets a spare. Do not leave an open frame. He's had one, he really must make sure that he doesn't have another. Correct. That's it, the five and the eight and left there, no problem. And you can see that little, little hand on the heart there. The <laughs> butterflies are there because this is, this is an unusual format. They, you don't play this sort of 10-pin bowling game very often. Head-to-head -head is always very difficult. One game, anything can happen. You know, it's, it's so, so difficult. Twice this man's finished fourth in the World Cup and fourth in any competition. It's not on the podium. 10-pin left. Yep. Jack looks down there, it was a very good ball, one can't see, you can see it goes straight into the pocket, into the one tree pocket, just doesn't get a flick across, and the ten pin stays standing. Looks good. Safely converted. No problem. Canada, who won the men's title on two occasions. The last time was Ray Mitchell back in 72. The first occasion, though, was here in Japan, the very first time Japan hosted the World Cup in 1969 in Tokyo, and the champion then was Graydon Robinson. Well, I wonder whether Jacques can come back. Mr. Herjip. Mr. Herjip. Lovely style, gets the ball, whether, see the way he fingers it up, right up through it, lifts it, ball right into the one three pocket. Maxine Nabel, the number one ranked from Australia, watching a fellow countryman, Fred Allsop. And as you can see, not much between them. Nip and tuck at uh, just about halfway. Fred Allsop in the sixth frame. And, uh, interestingly, no Australian man has ever won the World Cup. Little tight, in too much in the head bent. Leaving the 4-7, left-hand side. The women, of course, have a better record. As you can see the score there for yourself. Cara Honeychurch, the Australian who won the title in 96. And, of course, uh, Jeanette Baker, who had those back-to-back -back victories in 82 and 83. But Fred, as you can see, he's very serious about business, isn't he? Yeah, he certainly wants to be the first Australian man to win. Good shot. A little sigh of relief there from Fred. You get the sense that the butterflies are really in his tummy. Interesting, just looking at some of the stats, that out of the first 32 games, Fred had 20 200-plus games. That's an incredible average. Absolutely. Now, it's all so important the way you position yourself for the lineup. Get the feet in the right spot for the number of steps up to the foul line. Good release there. Got a lucky. It turned too far across, but he got a strike out of it. He'd be happy with that, even though it wasn't in the one-two pocket where it's supposed to be, but a strike's a strike. Here you'll see. He gets it, turns it a little bit. Ball comes over too much in the way down the lane. Doesn't stay in the one-two. Crosses over, but what we would call a Brooklyn strike, and it's all ten pins down. Pressure back on Jacques now. Well, I thought for a second there he was going to get left with a split. Just not, he's not sort of playing as we've seen him play during the week. On the other hand, Jack out of 32 games, he's at 21 plus 200 games, and he's been really bowling well, but I can't help thinking he just has, had, has the head down sort of here. Confidently gets the spare. But spares are no good to him. Spares must make strikes because Alsop has gone open frame in the first and then he's gone strike in two, three, four, and he hasn't had an open frame since. Whereas Jack, you can see, has an open frame in the first and the fourth. So he needs to make at least one, if not two, three strikes in a row to claw back. Oh. 
left it out too far. Just didn't make it at the end, perhaps just threw it a little bit too hard, just got by the number one pin. Here you can see it, it just cuts by the head pin, only just barely clicks it, kicks across, doesn't get back, and it leaves the two, four, ten. So that line just wrong, just a little bit too wide, a little bit out too much on the right-hand side of the lane. Oh, difficult. Oh. Well, that's class. That's why he's been in so many World Cup finals, because he's just such a good player. I mean, that's brilliant. Watch it here. Kicks across. Bingo. Ten pin. Straight in the head. And spare it is. Escape from jail. Well, we don't know yet, but his head, as you say, is still down. Here's yeah. uh, Fred, who... His favorite bowler of all time, the uh, U.S. pro bowler, Earl Anthony, someone you know well. I do indeed, yeah. Another top player. Well, well that wasn't part of the script. Left the seven pin there. Anthony, of course, one of the all-time great professional bowlers on the American tour, now bowling on the seniors tour, I do believe. Now, as long as he takes this away he's not doing himself any damage no, he's, he's he's actually well in control despite the fact that Jack converted that split but he can't afford to miss no problem. and that's a difficult pin the left hand side the seven pin for a left hander but he made it look so simple takes it out and there you see the scoreboard now 113 145 Fred, who's had some golden moments, if you go back to 1980, gold medals at the FIQ uh, Asian Zone Championship, that was a, a pretty good achievement, even though it was all those years ago, because the standard in Asia is high. Very high, very, very high. But how dearly does he want to win this? That was absolutely spot on. Got the right line down the lane, got the right speed in the ball, and went straight into the one-two pocket. And it's a strike in the ninth frame for Fred Alsop. Well, the situation here is that uh, nothing less than strikes home. And then he's going to have to have a bit of help from Fred. He is. He's going he's to have to hope that Fred makes a, a slip up in the tenth or thereabouts. But he, he, he's going to have to go all the way if he's got any chance. That looked a little better. And it is. Now, that's what we've seen from Jack Gay all week. He's been striking so much all week, and to get up to his average of the week of in excess of 200, it's been brilliant. So we're not going to rule him out because he is a super player. Taking his time. Now you see the difference, 165, 133. It's not over yet. Well, it's just like their averages. You had Jack on 208.9, Fred on 208.6. So there never was much between the two. Absolutely spot on again. So he has found the line down the right side of the lane and straight into the pocket. So Jack is making a comeback. Here we see it again. Gets the ball well out the lane. Watch the way he gets it out. Follows it right through. Nice position at the fowler. And there you see beautiful strike. Needs to keep going, though. And keep the hand dry, too. You see him blowing on there. Here we go. Now, focus on the spot. Good. Looks good. Oh, well, yes. He suddenly found the groove, and even Fred knows how good that is. Well, that's the pressure on Fred now, I can tell you. Here we go. So, another strike would give Jack a 193 game posted, and posted is better than having to post. Because you then have to get up and follow. And he knows this. Look, the way he's taking his time, he knows another strike here is going to put it all up to Fred Alsop. Again, focus. Get your spot on the lane. Let the ball do the work. Oh, what, a, what a shot. Four in a row to finish. 193 on the board for Jack Gay. It's now up to this man. Well, he's, he's been feeling and showing signs of pressure all the way through, Fred, but he's, he's so close.
but he's not he's not there yet no see he keeps looking at that scoreboard we know what it is it's 193 fred and that means you're going to need a spare or a strike here in order to lock out jack he knows it too uh oh well lucky he see that he knows it's lucky hit it hit it, hit it right in the middle of the head pin and Jack knows how unlucky he is. Because it could have been a split. That could well have been a split, but it's not. That was perhaps the open frame he was praying for. It's the six and the ten pin. They're together over in the right-hand corner to see them. And if Fred is going to progress, he needs to get them. Game ball. That's it. Yeah. That was it. Jacques finished fourth twice. This time is going to have to be satisfied with finishing fifth in the World Cup. And this one of his major ambitions remains unachieved for the Canadian. But for Fred now, he knows that he's made one step on the ladder. <laughs> Feeling perhaps a little more relaxed and he gets the strike and it's Fred Allsop from Sydney who marches on who incidentally says that uh, if he bowls in a new shirt and bowls poorly he'll never wear it again well he doesn't need to throw this one away here's the thoughts of the two men on this very close game the shot wasn't the great greatest but uh, fell into place after that still threw a couple of loose shots the first shot in the 10th wasn't that great either but I got away with it so gave me the match. Jack, Jack uh, had a bit of trouble early in the game and came back strong, which I thought he would, so even when I was, I think I was 20 in front, I, I didn't know, I didn't believe that I was still over the line until the last ball. This uh, sudden death stuff's a bit nerve-wracking, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> My heart's pounding 100 miles an hour. <laughs> but you've made the first step up the ladder now, you've got to go on from here. Next match? Next match, well, I, I thought to myself yesterday the, the hardest one to win would have been the first one because after that you're more relaxed, you, you play it on the lane, so hopefully that will come true and we'll be back again after the next match, uh, we have another win. No, it's not easy, plus you only have a couple of shots to decide where you're going to play and I play a little bit too far outside. I needed to, I, once I moved in a little bit then I started to strike but it was too late. But I tried to strike out hoping you'd get an open but it didn't work. <laughs> So Fred Allsop successfully makes his first step and will now face Japan's Koichi Takahashi. Whoever wins that match will earn a chance to topple the Mexican Mario Quintero for a place in the final. For now, though, from Bernard Gibbons and myself, David Goldstrom, thanks for your company.